Rob Carter is a marine biologist, so he took me scuba diving to get a glimpse of a world most people don't see. His specialty was coral, and he knew a lot about the incredible creatures that inhabit the reefs around St. Thomas. Oh man, we got the sharks here. I mean, just look how they move, I and mean, it's almost like effortlessly glide along. I wish I could swim like that. Engineers wish we could make boats like that. Yeah. Submarines that could move as efficiently as a shark. We yeah. can't quite do it. So from your perspective as a marine biologist, and I know that you've studied the whole area of genetics a lot. Yes. When people talk about evolution, what is it? How do you define evolution? The word means change over time. But I believe in change over time but I'm not an evolutionist, so how does one figure this out? Really, evolution is a belief that enough change over time, over enough time, can lead to the common ancestry of all species okay. on Earth. All right. So that's the part I reject. Of course species change. I mean, look at these sharks here. We have several different species of sharks. When God created, he put into those organisms the ability to change, to adapt, to respond dynamically mm -hmm. to the environment but there are still sharks. And when we look at the fossil record, there are still sharks. Mm -hmm. you know, people have heard the phrase, the missing link, right. and they usually think of between man and monkeys. No, there's missing links between almost every major group of animal and almost every other major group of animal and plant, even bacteria, throughout the entire fossil record, which indicates very strongly that these are actually different creations. So we don't get one kind becoming another kind. No, evolutionary theory requires that small, random changes can explain everything we see. Mm -hmm. But it can't. And why can't it? Because life is so complex that small changes can't explain it. Just like you can't take a computer operating system mm -hmm. and look at it and say, oh yeah, this is built up one digit <laughs> at a time right. over any length of time. No, it took an intelligent person to sit down and put it together. Right. Well, I can guarantee you, as one who was in that world, that if anyone in the area of computer science were to say, if we just randomly change some things in this operating system, it'll get better. I well, mean, no. no one would agree with that. No, we're not going to get the shark to evolve into a bird. That the, the number of changes and the types of changes are not something that you can do mm -hmm. one change at a time. The dinosaurs are already dinosaurs when they first when they first appear. They look just like anyone would think a dinosaur looked. And this is an enigma for, for those who believe in the evolution of the dinosaurs. But we hear a lot about transitional forms. What's, what's the real story there? Scientists have been able to lay out some forms they think are transitional. And some of them are very interesting, some even challenging. But they are the exceptions to the rule. The rule is there are no transitional fossils. And, what we find in the fossil record, and contra to Darwin's hopes, this is the rule, is that a form exists in the fossil record, it basically stays unchanged, and it disappears from the fossil record without having been changed. That's got to mean something besides evolution, because we don't ever see changes from this form into this form in the, in the rocks themselves. So it's coming from somewhere else. It's, it's a, it's a paradigm that's being imposed on the data rather than the data providing the paradigm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very easy for me to be a creationist just based on my understanding of the complexity of life forms. And when we look at the fossil record, we can see that complexity is all there from the beginning. And this, this begs the question of where did all this complexity come from? After we left the zebras, we made our way to the gorillas. Todd wanted to talk about the question of human evolution. Todd, we see it all the time, a new discovery, new skulls, new skeletons that supposedly solidify this whole link. Yeah. What do you see there? Absolutely. Well, I got some right here in my bag. Ooh, a skull. So this guy is a Neanderthal, very, very low forehead, so we have really tall foreheads. Mm -hmm. Um, the face, the mid face has been pulled out. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, well, it looks very human. So that's Neanderthal. Okay. You want to hold that yeah. one for me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have others that are very different. Oh, yeah. Now, this one is Australopithecus africanus. So you can see 
really no forehead at all. It just slopes right back. Mm -hmm. Very, very small brain case. Uh, muzzle sticks way out, so the face, face is sloped forward. What do you do with this stuff? I mean, there's many more that we could show, many more pictures, many more skulls, and you can see, looking sure. at the, looking yeah. at them together, they're really, mm -hmm. there's a lot of difference yeah. there. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So all that created kind stuff that we already talked about, I can show again and again and again with multiple studies that I can find a discontinuity between humans and non-humans. So this thing lands on the human side. This Neanderthal here, it's one of us. This thing is not, mm. it is different. But this would be just another one of those varieties of living things that God made mm. in the beginning and that survived the flood aboard the ark. So when we look at uh, Neanderthal man, uh, we're looking at uh, a human, uh, but it's a human that just like we find in dogs, we have a lot of variety of, of dogs. We got a lot we're of variety of people. So even looking back here at the gorilla, we can see the obvious differences between us and him, not the least of which is that he's in there and we can go home when we're done. And so those differences are really huge, aren't they? I, yeah, absolutely. The image of God entails this idea of being God's representative here on this earth. Part of that then is having dominion and having authority, spiritual quality that we have yeah. that we don't share uh -huh. with animals like that. Yeah. It's obvious we're different from the rest of creation because we're made in God's image. We're the only ones to create zoos so we can see the beauty of God's animals. And we're unique in tracking time and wanting to know our own history. But where does our concept of time come from?